Hey guys, this is Hetu. Welcome or welcome back to ETL QL app. So in this session or in this video, we will look at uh, defect or bug life cycle. All right. So since everything has a life cycle and it, it goes basically from one phase to other phase until it finishes, right? Or it's completed. Similarly, the defect is also having a defect or bug is also having the same uh, some life cycle, right? And during that life cycle, it will change the multiple status, right? Until it is closed, right? So ultimately, what is defect, guys? You know that defect is basically any kind of deviation uh, with regards to expected behavior of the software. It's called defect, right? Simple. Now, if you find any deviation, then what you will do? You will basically go and log a bug, right? So in your defect management system. It can be um, any kind of things, any kind of, you know, defect management system. Uh, it can be Jira, it can be ALM, it can be Spira team, anything, right? I uh, will not go into that detail. But then uh, I just wanted to talk about this process. Yeah? What is the entire process for the defect life cycle and what are the different phases? And what, when, when somebody say, what does this mean in, in the defect life cycle in this particular status of the defect? What does it mean? Right. So I wanted to cover each and every point here and then you will understand basically. OK. And guys, one more thing is uh, basically what whatever status I have put in in the entire uh, life cycle of this defect, it may not be exactly same in your project also because it, it will vary and it can be based on your requirement or your uh, when the defect life cycle, defect management life cycle is set up, it will be agreed between a stakeholder what are the defect life cycle, you know, status that you need, right? Uh, but uh, overall idea is to understand here and I will be covering each and every, uh, you know, status here so that, you know, it is, uh, it is the same, it is conveying the same meaning, okay? So that's, that's the, you know, idea here, okay? So let's start then guys. So what happens is when you uh, when you start testing application, you find a defect and then you will go and you will log the defect into your defect management system. OK. All right. So that point of time, as soon as you log in as a tester, the defect will be in new status. OK. Now, uh, what will happen is you uh, you are not really very sure about whether this is a defect or not defect sometime. Yeah, not all the time, sometime. Then what you will do is you will ask your uh, so that's the very purpose of having the status in new status because you want to have a review or your peer review within your team, right? And then you can ask your peers to review it whether this is the really the defect or something. Once you know your peer says that okay, this is confirmed that this is a this is or it can be your team lead also, right? I mean basically the semi who understand the application more. Uh, I mean similar to you, right? Uh, you would uh, take the second opinion from him, all right? And once he confirms this is really a defect, then you will actually go and change the status to open status. And then as soon as you change the status of the defect as a open status, you will also assign it to the particular developer, okay? Who is working on that particular module, okay? So once the defect is assigned, it will be in open state. And then developer will get a notification on his email I mean, if it is set up, obviously, or you will notify them uh, that uh, there is a defect logged and this is the defect number, etc. Developer will go and check, right? What is this defect and whether this is really, uh, you know, defect or not. So while he can do one thing, he can basically, uh, there can be three different status, okay? When uh, developer analyzes it, it can be in review, okay? So what, as soon as he gets the defect, he can actually, uh, uh, do the review yeah it can go into review and uh, developer will change the status of the bug as a review in review okay while he performs the review uh, he will analyze everything whether this is really a defect so there can be three things right it is a valid defect okay fine and it is urgent that need to be fixed so it will go to in development state okay so this is what the developer will change the status as in development there is this is a defect okay second case is the defect is valid but it is of low priority a low severity which can which is not really important and it can be fixed into next uh, subsequent releases right and then that that defect can be put into deferred status developer will go and mark it as a deferred status based, based on his understanding okay third thing can be that it is not at all a defect okay third case not at all defect and he can go and he can mark that defect as rejected because uh, developer will uh, 
put in comments and he will say that this is not defect this is by design and uh, you know testers has to understand this particular user story or this particular requirement so he will give the reference and then he will just put into rejected state so these are the three different status that uh, uh, the test uh, the developer can put in either deferred either in rejected or in development okay now what we'll do is we will try to uh, okay so we will take one by one guys okay so let's say this is not a defect okay and developers have put the rejected status now the tester will go and validate and uh, he he look he will look at the requirement and he will analyze it again he will try to understand the requirement and if dev, uh, it if the tester think that you know this is not at all uh, no, i mean this is a valid defect and developer is uh, uh, whatever he has given comment he is not satisfied he will go and reopen it and again assign it back to the developer the same developer okay this is what one scenario second scenario is deferred deferred uh, nothing can be done about de uh, deferred because deferred is deferred this is something the priority uh, you know this will be fixed at later point of time so nothing nothing will happen this uh, defect will be basically taken care by uh, you know the uh, this will be taken care into next release so this will be picked as a requirement by uh, the management or or you know the product uh, product owner or whoever is basically uh, you know managing this uh, scrum master all right third case in development the developer agrees that this is a defect and he will say that i am actually developing this or i am fixing this okay after fixing he will developer will again put the status as a fixed status okay now once it is fixed it is put in the fixed status what he will do is he will actually also deploy the code into qa environment and now tester tester will again go and change the status as retest in progress because he will start testing it because this is fixed right and obviously it will take some time so he will check uh, change the status of the defect as retest in progress and uh, after retest either he can close it if he satisfied the defect is no more you know existing it is fixed already he can close it and that's all right so defect is closed already second thing can be that uh, later point of time if testers think that you know this is uh, closed there is also a possibility that this is again guys this is again uh, based on your team's agreement uh, you can uh, always you can close the defect forever and you can reopen a new one or you can always uh, go back and you know change the status of that defect to again reopen okay it it can be based on your agreement within your team right the defect management defect manager will basically uh, set it up or the test manager will define all these things right but ideally once it is closed you are supposed to raise a new bug okay if you are finding the similar functionality okay if the same functionality is stopped working again you think that this is a defect then you can again open it reopen it and again assign it back to developer in reopen state okay second thing while you are performing the test you are not happy here and that you still feel that defect is not fixed you can go and reopen again so you can actually put the status as reopen as a tester now what will happen is developer can, developer has two choices now okay he can uh, put the status as in review because he want to actually analyze this and uh, while analyzing if he finds that you know this is not a valid defect he can go and reject it okay or there is another case you put the status as reopen developers think that it is not at all a defect then he can straight away go and change the status as rejected okay guys so this is kind of you know uh, the defect is always going into loop all right in the cycles basically so these are the few uh, you know uh, not few i think i just try to cover everything so one of the most important question that you know anyone uh, can ask you what is the deferred status in a defect right so what is deferred status basically the functionality which are of low priority and low severity this uh, will not impact anything of your uh, product and uh, we can wait for uh, you know that is that can be wait for uh, you know future releases and that defect can be put into deferred status simple okay but we have to fix it before final production cut okay so that particular defect will be put into deferred status so i hope that uh, you are able to understand and now i think a uh, rest of the defects are uh, you know i already uh, you know um, uh, 
discussed about all this status guys okay so hopefully this is uh, making sense to you and you are able to understand the entire defect life cycle guys and uh, this is the typical uh, life cycle there might be some different status of the defects but uh, you know that is again based on your uh, team requirement but this is more or less these are the status mostly uh, in your defect life cycle wherever you work in the project okay so that's all for this uh, video guys and uh, see you soon with the next video uh, on a different topic and uh, until then happy learning and uh, one more thing guys uh, if you really like this video and i'm putting lot of other videos on the etl testing database unix uh, data warehousing concepts etc so if you really like my channel please uh, consider it to subscribe it so that you can uh, enhance your knowledge and you can you know uh, really utilize uh, this knowledge session that i am sharing with you guys okay so until then happy learning guys bye